Hi, this is Dr. Brian Walsh, member of the research and development team with ProGrade. And if you're watching this video, chances are you've heard of the health benefits of omega-3 fatty acids, specifically EPA and DHA. Now, a lot of people talk about these being in fish oil, but I want to show you some of the differences between fish oil and krill oil. Most everybody could probably benefit from EPA and DHA as a part of their supplement program today for reasons of things like brain function, cardiovascular health, immune system health, as well as decreasing inflammation all over our body. EPA and DHA have also been shown to possibly help with weight loss, improve blood sugar handling, and have been shown to help specific conditions, everything ranging from depression to infertility and even autoimmune conditions. So it's pretty clear that we'll, we'd likely benefit from EPA and DHA, but then we're uh, posed with the, should we take fish oil or krill oil? Now I'll be honest, uh, I, I knew about krill oil for a long time and I didn't make the switch. I used fish oil with myself, my family, and my patients. I've made the switch to uh, krill oil because I personally have come up with reasons that I think krill oil makes more sense. Now there are a lot of reasons, a lot of differences between krill and fish oil. What I'm going to show you in this short video today are reasons that I personally have made the switch. These make the most sense to me and make krill oil the obvious choice between the two. Now it starts out with how the omega-3 fatty acids are found. In nature, the omega-3 fatty acids in fish oil are in a triglyceride form, or a newer, newer word is called triacylglycerol. Now here's how you need to digest and absorb a triglyceride form or triacylglycerol to get this into your system. The first thing that happens after you consume something in the triglyceride form is your liver and gallbladder, your liver makes and your gallbladder stores something called bile. Now bile acts as an emulsification agent on fatty acids. It basically helps to break up the fat into smaller drop, fat droplets or globules. So once bile acts on that triglyceride and breaks it down into smaller pieces, the second step is your pancreas releases an enzyme called pancreatic lipase that further breaks it down and basically prepares that triglyceride to be absorbed from your small intestine, in this case into your lymphatic system or into your body. But here's, here's the big issue with this. You need bile in order for the pancreatic lipase even to work. In other words, you can have all the pancreatic lipase that you want, but if bile is not present or not doing its job well to emulsify that fat, you cannot absorb that fat, that triglyceride, or that fish oil in that case. So the problem with this, though, is many people today have some kind of either liver, gallbladder, or bile dysfunction. 500,000 Americans every year get surgery on their gallbladder, and that's people that had symptoms that were bad enough even to bring them doctor to the doctors in the first place. A lot of people have experienced the fish oil burp. After taking fish oil gel caps, you get that, that nasty fish oil uh, taste in your mouth. Clinically, we see that as a deficiency in this whole bile system for some reason, that you're not breaking it down, so you're getting these fish oil burps. Other things that, pe that may indicate that you have gallbladder issues is if you eat a fatty meal that you get pain between your shoulder blades, maybe you get gastrointestinal distress, or a high fat meal causes diarrhea. Any of those are a pretty strong indication that maybe you have an issue with your gallbladder or bile. And the point is, is if you lack gallbladder function, liver function, or adequate bile secretion and release, you can't break down and digest and absorb that fish oil that you're taking. <clears throat> now, Compare that to the phospholipid form. The phospholipid form of omega-3 fatty acids are found in krill oil. The phospholipid form, the real benefit to this, is the phospholipid form of a fatty acid totally bypasses the need for emulsification or bile. In other words, somebody that lacked a gallbladder, somebody that had poor gallbladder function, somebody that had fish oil burps after taking fish oil, may tremendously benefit from the phospholipid form because you don't need bile to emulsify this particular fatty acid before it gets absorbed. All you need is a different pancreatic enzyme to break it down for it to be absorbed. And there was a study that showed that people taking krill oil had the same blood levels or even higher of EPA and DHA than a fish oil group. And I believe that this is the reason why. Let's take a look at that study. There was two groups, one taking fish oil and one taking krill oil for a period of 30 days. The people taking fish oil were consuming 212 milligrams of EPA and 178 milligrams of DHA, again for 30, uh, 30 days or a month. The EPA in the blood resulted in 293 units in the blood and DHA was 478 in the fish oil group. Now compare that to the krill oil group. Krill oil, if you notice, they were taking about the same 
uh, milligram dosage of EPA, 212 versus 216. Yet, at the end of 30 days, the krill oil group had almost 100, 100 points more uh, EPA in their blood level than did the fish oil group of EPA. So basically, they were taking the same amount, but they had more in their blood. Now, the DHA is really interesting. The fish oil group was taking 178 milligrams a day. The krill oil group was taking only 90 milligrams, so basically half the amount of DHA. Yet, at the outset, after 30 days, they had almost identical levels of blood DHA. So basically what this says is you can take less krill oil, less EPA and DHA, and yet have a higher blood level than the same amount or more in fish oil. And again, I believe it's because of this process here. That the phospholipid form of omega-3 fatty acids is more bioavailable, more easily absorbed, and totally bypasses the need for emulsification by bile. Now, one other quick component of that, the phospholipid form of DHA has found to be taken up by the brain better than the uh, triglyceride form of DHA. And when you look at the studies of DHA and brain health, it's very clear that we want as much DHA getting into our brain as possible. So those two reasons alone for me, to be honest with you, are enough to make the switch from fish oil to krill oil, but there's more. In the fish oil industry, they try to condense as much EPA and DHA into the gel caps as possible. And to do that, they go through a process called transesterification, which is basically taking off the glycerol molecule and adding on an alcohol molecule. And then what you essentially have is now almost a synthetic fatty acid. But here's the problem. If you thought triglycerides were more challenging or difficult to digest than phospholipids, the fatty acid, after it goes through that transesterification, is called an ethyl ester form. That has been shown to be as many as 50 times more difficult to digest and absorb than the triglyceride form, which is more difficult to digest and absorb than the phospholipid form. So unless your fish oil says in the natural or triglyceride form, it's probably in that ethyl ester form. So the question is, is of the fish oil you're taking, how much are you actually getting into your system? And the only way really to know is to do blood levels of it. Now, again, that is enough for me to make the switch, to have it be more bioavailable, more easily absorbed, and to be able to take less yet get higher levels or equal values, at least, um, makes, that, makes sense for that reason. The one other benefit is astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is found in krill oil, and it is a really potent antioxidant. Astaxanthin by itself has been shown to be helpful in skin conditions, improving eyesight, cardiovascular disease and heart uh, issues, diabetes, dementia, and many inflammatory conditions like asthma, for example. Now here's the, the real reason why astaxanthin is probably so potent and effective as an, as an antioxidant. Astaxanthin can actually embed itself into what's called the phospholipid bilayer membrane of all the cells of our body. Most antioxidants will either exist outside the cell or maybe get inside the cell, but astaxanthin, because of the way that it's um, molecularly uh, shaped, can fit inside the cell membrane. Now this means that we are now protecting this cell from reactive oxygen species, or an, uh, an, uh, free radicals, for example, from the outside, of which there are many in our world today, as well as anything that our body is normally producing. Now, we normally produce reactive oxygen species as a normal part of life, but we are protected from these reactive oxygen species from the inside and outside, ultimately protecting our cells. And we want to keep our cells as healthy as possible because, really, all disease, all symptoms is a consequence of dysfunctional cells. How many? That depends on what symptom or disease that you might have. But the more cells that we can keep healthy uh, and functioning properly, the healthier we are. So astaxanthin makes a lot of sense as an antioxidant to actually protect ourselves from the inside and outside. So again, there are more differences between krill oil and fish oil. And honestly, if you go online, you'll see people arguing and debating about those, those issues. Having looked in this deeply myself, these are the reasons that I've made this switch. Krill oil in the phospholipid form is more bioavailable, more easily digested, totally bypasses the need for bile and emulsification, and has astaxanthin. That, those are enough reasons for me to take krill myself, for my family, as well as to offer this to my patients. So I hope you found this video helpful. If there are other videos that you'd like information on or like to see in the future, please let us know here at ProGrade, and I wish you the best day. Thank you so much.